Imagine having an idea for a YouTube video. You start typing out the script and then pause for a second. And then the assistant in the background takes over. Just for a few words or, or maybe a whole sentence, helping you get that thought flowing again. It's almost like it knows what you want to actually say, but it's just a little nudge in the right direction. If it goes in a strange direction, just don't accept the suggestion. You might even see something it suggests, but not like how it said it, and you start going in a new direction. It could be a fun way to experiment with your writing style, see where your ideas take you when you have a little extra help. This is basically how I write most of my video scripts these days, with an AI assistant in the background, helping me flesh out the concepts and keep the momentum going. I don't accept the stuff I wouldn't say myself, but it's amazing how often it hits on something I'm thinking, but I just can't quite articulate. It's like having a brainstorming partner who never runs out of ideas or the energy to express them, but you're still in control of the final product. In this video, I'll show you what I'm using to do this and how I configured it. None of what I'm using costs any money. There isn't any upfront costs or subscription, just the computer you have, assuming it has a decent GPU. Sorry about that, but if you don't have the GPU, you could use ChatGPT or Grog or Goose AI or AI21, though those last two I had never heard of until just now. You could also host a service you run in the cloud yourself, but that's a little bit more advanced. So I'm just going to assume that you have a decent GPU and we'll go from there. First, the editor I'm using is Obsidian. It's a fantastic tool for note-taking and organization, but it has a powerful plugin system that allows you to do some really cool things. There are lots of other tools out there, but Obsidian, is what works best for me. It has a clean and intuitive interface and you can easily turn it into the best UI for you. Of course, there's always going to be that person who's going to tell me that they won't use it because it's not open source. But a lot of the best tools out there aren't open source, so I'm fine with that. But you do you. When you install Obsidian, the first thing you need to do is to turn off restricted mode. This is what allows you to use community created plugins. Now I use a lot of plugins, but the one I'm focused on for this video is called Companion by Rizerfi. So go ahead and install that. Go into settings for Companion and the first thing you wanna enable is enable by default. I also turn on streaming mode. Now it says that it's experimental, but it seems to be working fine for me. Delay is something you're gonna to have to play with. I have it set to 500 milliseconds right now, and, and I go back and forth between 100 milliseconds and 800 milliseconds, depending on how I feel. If you're on a laptop and away from a power source, setting it to 100 milliseconds means you're gonna blow through your battery a lot faster. I have Code Mirror Keybind enabled and use the tab key binding to accept the suggestions. For accept, there are four options. One word at a time, one sentence, one line, or the whole thing. I clicked on one word. Clicking this actually sets a few settings in the advanced controls. I think I also adjusted minimum display length and um, retrigger threshold. Next is provider. I use Olama for this. If you haven't watched any of my previous videos, then welcome to the channel. Olama is an open source project that lets you run large language models on your own hardware. There are a number of tools out there that promise the same functionality, but Olama is really the best of the bunch at doing this. And I don't just say that because I was one of the founding maintainers of the project. It really is that good. And there are literally millions of users who are using it every day. So to get started with that, go to olama.com and click the download button in the middle of the page. You can then install it on your platform and be up and running in minutes. Once it's installed, you need to download a model. You can find a list of models on the Olama website, but there's a lot of choices and it can be a little overwhelming. So I'll give you a couple of recommendations. I was using the Llama 3.2 3 billion parameter model until very recently and just switched over to using the 9 billion parameter Gemma 2 model. 
At 9 billion parameters, it's a bit slower than Llama 3.2, but the performance improvement is noticeable, generating more coherent and creative text. And it seems to understand what I want a bit better. Now I'm using a 2021 M1 Max MacBook Pro with 64 gigs of RAM, which gets me a very usable 40 tokens per second versus Llama 3.2 running at 80 tokens per second. You don't really need to understand what that means, but it's just a way to measure how fast the model can process information. You'll get a different number depending on your hardware. To download Gemma 2 with 9 billion parameters, run Olama pull Gemma 2 colon 9b. That's gonna take a few minutes to download. While you're waiting, you can help me a ton by liking this video and subscribing to the channel. The reason you hear a lot of YouTubers say that is that it really helps us all out. Thanks so much for your support. Gemma 2 has a max contact size of 8K tokens, and Llama 3.2 has a max contact size of 128K tokens. But when you first pull any model from Olama, it's set to 2K tokens for the context. It's very easy to change, but knowing what to set it to depends on a lot of things, mostly how much memory you have on your system. I go into more detail on how to do that in this video. But to start, you can just stick to the default models. So let's go back to Obsidian and the configuration for Companion. Unless you know you have set up Olama in a different way, the default API route should be fine. That's HTTP colon slash slash localhost colon 11434. For model, click the dropdown and choose the model you want to use. If you want to use what I'm using, that's Gemma 2 colon 9b. I don't have anything in my system prompt and I've updated the user prompt to this. I'll include the text in the description below. It's a little different from the default, but play around with what works for you. I'm not 100% sure if this is the best config, but it's what I've settled on. For temperature, I have it set to 0.2. The acceptable range for temperature isn't all that clear, and it depends on the documentation you read. Some folks think it's between 0 and 1. Others say 0 and 2. Yet others say 0 and 5 or even any number, but most stocks will say between zero and two. The temperature helps the model figure out what should be the next word in the sequence. A value of zero means the next word is the one that is most likely to be found in the sequence. And as you go further from zero, it chooses other words from the list of possibilities. The simpler explanation is that as it goes further from zero, it is um, more creative. If you wanna play around with multiple settings, it can be useful to create presets. Then you can come back to previous settings more easily. One tip that's pretty useful to remember is to copy the user prompt to some other place to save it. I find that when editing this page, it often goes back to the default user prompt, which can be super frustrating, but that's it. Now you can go back to the editor and start typing. Every time you stop and give the model a chance to respond, you'll see suggestions start to show up. Once you start using it more and more, you may find that like me, it becomes part of your workflow and it's hard to do without it. It really is that powerful. And it can save you a lot of time and effort. Now, it's not without its problems though. It's fast at the beginning of the document and gets slower to generate as you write more in a single document. And that's because the context section of the prompt is everything before the cursor. At the start of your doc, that's not a lot. But towards the end, it can be a lot more. I'm at 1500 words right now and it takes a few seconds to generate anything. This isn't really an Olama issue, but rather just physics in the way of the world. The author of the plugin acknowledged this and said he would work on that next, but that comment is over a year old. So I wouldn't hold your breath on that one. I've been thinking about building my own plugin for Obsidian that would solve this and a few other thoughts, but I haven't really built it yet. So that's a look at the tool I use. I really dig it and I find it super useful. I hope you will too. Thanks so much for watching. Goodbye. Where's my water bottle?
Maybe I jake this.